you know, ju just before answering that question, one of the things that happened in South Africa, which I like people to believe, is that, I mean to understand, is that some of these laws were there already. This is the Immigration Act passed in 2002, part of which in the white paper. Not part of it, all of it. We want to repeal and start from the scratch. Because some of the laws appearing here are not being applied. And people believe when we start applying them, we are starting a new thing. Let me, I want to read this on the work visa. This is Regulation 18 of the Immigration Act 2013 of 2002. Uh, Regulation 18.2 says, An employer, the employer shall ensure that passport of his or her employee are valid at all times. No, that's not the one I, I, I want to read. That's section three. An application for a general work visa shall be accompanied by one, a letter issued to the prospective employer by the Department of Labor to the effect that a certificate has been issued to the department confirming, number one, that despite a diligent search, prospective employer has been unable to find a suitable citizen or permanent resident with qualifications or skills and experience equivalent to those of the applicant. That, that's what the certificate is looking for. Have you searched all over South Africa and found that there is absolutely nobody throughout the length and breadth of South Africa with 62 million people who can perform that work? Number two, the applicant has qualifications or proven skills and experience in line with the job offer, with that offer job that is being offered. And three, which is being ignored, which causes uh, my sister this uh, preference. It says the salary and benefits of the applicant are not inferior to the average salary and benefits of citizens or permanent residents occupying similar positions in the Republic. I'm sure you are aware, because we have said this many times, the Minister of Labor has said it, that employers prefer to hire certain people from outside the country because they pay them lower wages. But the Act clearly say, when you hire that person from outside, it must be clear that their salaries and benefits are not inferior. They must be equal to somebody who is a South African. I can assure you with my eyes closed, this has not been applied in many instances. And in Home Affairs, we are going to push for that. Number four, the contract of employment stipulating the conditions of employment signed by both the employer and the applicant is in line with the labor standards in the Republic and is issued on condition that the general work visa is approved. These are the conditions in the Act, which in most cases are not being, uh, 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 are not being uh, followed. I have now spoken about something else. I, 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 I forgot the two questions I'm supposed to answer. If you can help, Chief. Yes, yes. You know, to my knowledge, and I was just asking the DG before standing up, we don't have any backlog on business visas. We have got backlog on dependency visas. And time and again we are told this, that we have got the backlog on business visas, etc. We issue them as quick as we can because we want the economy to grow. The backlog we are having and we are looking for solutions is dependency. That means any business person who comes here, they would like to come with their spouse and the family. That's why we are having it tough, because we have taken all our resources to deal with the business person themselves. A CEO of a company, a person who is going to establish a business. Uh, and, and, but we keep on hearing this backlog on business. For instance, last year, the president had an investment summit. I think it was in May or June last year, there were about 20 companies which pledged that they will, you know, MTN, Mercedes, German Development Agency and all that. 
They pledged that they want to invest in South Africa. And after the investment summit, between themselves, they provided us with 3,090 individuals who they said must come from other countries to come and implement that investment. 3,090. By October, that's last year, we have already issued them. But in January, we had an outcry that we are collapsing business, we're doing nothing, and all that. I am not sure why people do this to us. You may remember my last press conference here, for which I was reprimanded, especially by ENCA, and I'm apologizing to them today. I will never do that. I announced another station where I was going to answer some questions. <laughs> and they were not happy to answer the question. It was a question about a German national who was given a job as a CEO of a company. And he went out publicly to say, we are refusing to give him a scarce skill visa. And when we, and you know, Business Unity South Africa came to thrash us, 702 thrashed us, Business Day thrashed us. When we went to check, there was no application. It was not there. And I said, that's how the dark fears, that we issue an application to anybody who did not apply. That person applied only on the 21st of November. That's last week. last week. Yes. But when we were being lambasted, it was very early on. Now, during BRICS, I received a message from my colleague and worked with him very well, Minister Patel. There's no way Minister Patel will leave us for not giving business visas because that's his job, to grow the economy, to make sure that business goes on. He gave us a list of people who said they want to come to BRICS, but they are not getting visas. And I angrily gave the list to the DG. DG, why are we delaying to give them visas? And the answer came within a short space of time. Half of these people did not apply. Please let them hand in their application. You can only deal with an application where the person is applied. And I said, do they want us to repeat what happened with Pastor Bushiri? We charge people and we fire them. Who gave Pastor Bushiri a permanent residence? And of course, they will have been praised that they are very quick. But when the Bushiri permanent resident permit was given, the application had not even arrived in South Africa. It was in the long way in Malawi. I will not allow that to happen. Not again, not when I've seen it. By giving somebody a visa where they have not applied for. Now, lastly, we did not deny that there might be a problem with visas. The president established Operation Volindlel, where he chose the former retired director general of the Department of Home Affairs, Mr. Mavusom Simang, to look at all the visas in South Africa and review them and see how we can make them more efficient, faster, and better in this world where... Uh, 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 there's a lot of competition. He did so. He provided the recommendations. We took them to Parliament. Last week in Parliament, we reported the progress. At least half of them are being implemented. Some of them are process issues, which are easier to implement. Others are legislative and regulatory. The minister cannot just ignore the law. We have put up processes to change that part of the law if it's the one that is delaying us. For instance, in the past they'll say, when you apply for a visa, we need an X-ray of your chest. We've done away with that because as a doctor, I was asking myself, why was this thing put here? I, I don't even have an idea why it was put there, what we're trying to achieve. We threw it away immediately because it's not in any law, it was just a practice. There was also a practice that when you come from I mean, when you, you are a multinational company moving all over the world uh, uh, to run your company, if you have to come to South Africa, you must get a police clearance from each country uh, uh, where you have applied. We've done away with that. We said it doesn't make sense. You know, we, we've done away with the period because it was saying where you have been for, for five years at least. We've, we've done away with that. We reduced it to 12 months. So we are really trying something. The last question is about visa-free. 
for tourism. And I want to give you the figures. In Europe, 44 countries in Europe, they don't need any visa to, to come to South Africa. You just wake up, you take your passport and you run. We don't demand any visa from you. Whether you are coming to see uh, uh, Kruger National Park or Table Mountain, you want to go to, the, to Durban and all that, there's no visa needed. 44 countries in Europe. You can see it's almost all of them. 26 countries in Asia, they don't need any visas to come here. 36 countries on the African continent, they don't need any visas to come here. 19 countries in North America, that includes the US and Canada and all the other island countries that are mostly English speaking, they don't need any visa to come here. 11 countries in South America, and you can calculate how many countries are there. And three countries in Oceania, around Australia and them. If you calculate your figures very well, they'll give you 134 countries. We've got 134 countries around the world who can just come here without a visa. And we allow them in. Those 34 that are left, we've given them an e-visa. Whereby you don't have to go to the mission to apply. You apply online at your home, in whatever country you are in, and then they come straight to Pretoria, no longer to the mission where we've been. And Pretoria issues an email and say, take this email, go to the airport, and come to South Africa. That's an e-visa. So, so we have done that, but that's for visitors. We are now piloting for general work visa, for study visa, and for business. We are for those who need visas. But the majority of countries don't need any visas whatsoever. So it's not only Rwanda that is given visa free. We also do that, but you don't do it to all countries. Because when you issue a visa, free status, you look at three things. Three, and that every country in the world is doing that. One, if you issue this visa, can you guarantee the safety and security? of people in your own country. Can you? Number two, can you guarantee the sovereignty of your country? And number three, what are the developmental needs of your country as opposed to the other country that you are giving this visa? Where are you in terms of development? Do you need the country more than it needs you? Even if the country does not give you visa free, can you survive without them? if you also don't give them visa free. After you answer those three questions, you then decide to give visa free. Doesn't happen automatically. And the conditions which Rwanda follows will be markedly different from the conditions that South Africa follows. They are very, very different. And I want to give you an example. And sometimes when I mention it, people get angry. In, in May 2019, I extended visa-free to six countries around the world. One of them was Saudi Arabia. I said they must come here visa-free. Let me not mention the others because it's not relevant. And we gave Saudi Arabia. But Saudi Arabia will never give South Africa visa-free. And people said, no, what about reciprocity? They are cheating you. No, no, no. No, they are not cheating us. Our developmental needs are different. In Saudi Arabia, they have got Mecca, where millions and millions of Muslims around the world are fighting to go there. As I'm speaking today, there are those who have been awarded the visa to come in only five years. So it's people fighting to go there. Here, where is our Mecca? We want people from Saudi Arabia to come here and spend their mega bucks and go away. We need it. We need that type of thing in our development. So we are not going to compete with them. Same as the U.S., I'm sure you are aware. The U.S. is coming visa-free to South Africa, but we don't go visa-free there. We pay those dollars and pounds to get the visa. Same as U.K. We used to go visa-free to the U.K. until people started defaulting our, our passport. That's why I'm so strict with anybody that defaults a passport. Because it affects the whole country, even innocent citizens who get affected.
UK then said, all oh, South Africans, when you come here, you must apply for a visa because we don't trust your passport anymore. But if we say, oh, we're going to hit back, you guys from UK, we also need a visa to come to South Africa. We are the ones who will be injured because we need them more than they, they need us here. So in the Department of Home Affairs, when you give visa free, we do that. And for your information, we don't issue visa free without input from state security. Because I talk about safety and security. And some of the things they will never mention in public what's happening, why they don't allow that visa free from that particular country. The latest country we gave visa free is Kenya. It started in January, isn't it? After a long discussion with them. And what was the discussion? We said, Kenya, we have noticed that there are people who are using your country as a springboard to come illegally to South Africa. They come via Nairobi airport from the east. Can you claim down on that? Because if we give you visa free, they will just go past. And uh, because they, they came through Kenya, and Kenya has got visa free. And Kenya agreed. I saw a story here everybody sent into me about some people who say they are highly trained who have been arrested in Kenya. And people believe it was an accident. It's not. We have signed a deal with Kenya that in order to give you visa free, claim down on these people. And number two, Kenya is the first country with which we signed for returns agreement. What does returns agreement mean? Kenya. If we find anybody who came to South Africa illegally via your territory, we send them back to your country. Finish and clear. We send them back, no negotiation, because they came through your country. So these things are not just, we don't just close your eyes and say, oh, Rwanda is giving visa free. I'm also giving it. Other countries give visa free because nobody is going there. They want people to come because nobody wants to go there. So countries are not the same when it comes to this issue of whether it's visa free and all that. A lot of factors are taken into consideration. And I'm proud to mention, after signing in November last year, visa free status with Kenya, which started in January. As I'm standing here, we only have to deport four people illegally from Kenya. They respect that agreement with us and we are very proud of that and we don't regret that we gave them visa free status. Other countries, we don't just do so. But you are aware that in SADC, they've got visa-free status with each other. It has got its own problems. I'm not going to mention them because none of you asked me about that. Thank you.